You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. I'm here tonight with uh, Jackie Swice, who has a new book out. If we could hold that up. There we go. Uh, Kings and Cowboys. Okay. How about maybe you just tell me a little about yourself? Sure. Well, I, I grew up here in Billings, and the um, and my family and I uh, basically lived here for several years, also in the Cody, Wyoming area, mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of the story is based, and originally came out of Colorado, and mm -hmm. so there's some reference to Colorado as well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've always been interested in, in writing. <laughs> as, a, as a small child, my mother discovered several little brown paper bags in my room with little secret notes that I had written to myself. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I was probably about six or seven years old at the time. Wow. And I guess that was the very budding beginnings of my, of my writing inclination. So, okay, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell me about the book. Well, Kings and Cowboys is a it is a fictionalized memoir that is it, that's um, told from the perspective of my older brother, who was a 17 year old teenager at the time, and uh, it's very embellished. There's not a lot of truth to it, so it's not a real <laughs> memoir. <laughs> but uh, but it was told as if he were writing his his diary or his story when he was about 17 years old, and that was in the mid 60s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's a, sort of a coming of age story, it seems. Right. But there's right. a twist. There is a twist. There is a twist, and the the story starts out with the car accident that he was involved in oh. and mm -hmm. the result of that accident um, uh, you know posed a lot of challenges for him he he ended up being paralyzed uh, mm -hmm. from that point forward so mm -hmm. but the story isn't so much about you know the the tragedy of being paralyzed it was more focused on his ability to take the cards that he was dealt and mm -hmm make the best of them and really have a great quality of life from that point forward too so well that's yeah. it's you know let's just say it was a, a, a pretty close to catastrophic accident i mean he was right he was paralyzed in all four limbs right uh and uh, so his his life changed a lot at that point exactly I and mean, he'd been Exactly. He was a pretty yeah. Pretty physically talented kid, and suddenly, yeah. Right. Right. But it is amazing that he really was able to go ahead with his life, and and he did a lot after that. He did. He did. Um, he was very successful. Uh, finished college. Actually, got his master's degree. He um, he and my mother eventually moved to Phoenix, and a lot of the reasoning for that was so that he could be more mobile during the winter months instead of oh, so of homebound. Course. And he ended up working with an organization down there. Um, it's called ABIL, A B I L, Arizona, um, Arizona Bridge to Independent Living. Mm. And so he actually became a counselor for other uh, people who mm -hmm. were trying to live independently with with um, you know some some handicaps like the like being paralyzed and so forth. So yeah. Well, you know, in my professional life, I've worked a lot with uh, people with. Uh, physical disabilities and and, uh, and with, well, just all kinds of kids. But one of the things that a lot of them would say, if they were trying to imagine this happening to themselves, they would say, oh, I would just rather be dead. I mean, I, I, if I couldn't mm -hmm. walk, I would, you know, that would be the end. Right. But it wasn't for him. Right. It, it wasn't. And it's not, it's not to say that he didn't go through that that phase of, oh my gosh, my life is over, you know, grieving. just do yeah. me in now, mm -hmm. and, and grieving the, the loss of being, you know, a normal 17-year-old teenage kid, but um, that that strength of will, that, I guess, that that wellspring from, from within, and, and, you know, having the strength, too, of my mom, and supporting him, and saying, we've got to go on, no matter what and make something of this. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so it really, it really was just an amazing story of the human spirit and 
-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when you're, I don't think anybody knows how they're going to react to something like that until they're faced with it. So, not really, yes. <laughs> right? So yeah. who's, who was the audience you had in mind when you wrote this book? So the audience that I had in mind um, when I wrote this book was, was really, um, it's, it's folks that grew up in that, in that time frame, the same time frame that my brother did, the mid-60s, mm. okay. you know, where, where it was kind of American graffiti type of lifestyle. Mm. And, and kids, were, kids were, you know, doing things that were, um, you know, pretty pretty innocent. I mean, some drag racing and chasing girls and, and going to movies and sports in school and mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, it was a pretty innocent time of life, I think, for, for folks in that area. And, um, and, and so really, I think, you know, my, my audience is more um, people that grew up in that, in that time frame. Or perhaps so. people who uh, would like to know more about it or kind of Right. Even, even though they didn't, maybe they're in some way nostalgic for that time. Right, and, yeah, right, yeah. that nostalgic, you know, um, the, the American graffiti meets the Wild West type yeah. of oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> combination. You know, I, th I really think it has a, 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 a really substantial audience because, I mean, it is a great story about human spirit, and not right. just about the time, but, but about the spirit. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not just a story for people my age. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, yeah. and actually, um, actually, my granddaughter, who's 18, read the book and absolutely loved it, enjoyed it a lot. Fantastic. And so it can appeal to young adults as well as, mm -hmm. you know, folks our age. So, yeah. I would think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. let me ask one more question. You're a member of the bookstore. Yes. Why? Because I, I really believe in the, uh, the structure of co-ops mm. to, to start with. I think that that helps um, support the community. It, it helps support community writers and um, keeps, you know, keeps that within our economy here. And mm -hmm. it's really unique. There's, there's so many little unique things about this, about this store that the... I guess the big franchise bookstores don't have. And that to me is very appealing. And it's also a tea shop. Yes. And I love that because I love tea and you know, the coffee shops are a dime a dozen, <laughs> but the tea shops are very rare here. So um, that's again, very appealing to me and becomes a gathering place for other folks that um, are are you know into the writing community um, looking for things that are a little bit more unique yeah yeah well thanks yep. so much Jack. you're welcome yeah thanks mark sure okay and pause This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved. Um, I need to ask about your pen name. Oh, yes. Okay. And then we'll just kind of add that in. Okay. Okay. So, your name is Jackie Spice, but you wrote this under a different name. I did. I, I have the pen name J.A. Woods. Mm -hmm. Woods is my maiden name, and I thought that that was very important in bringing in the, uh, the family name and the family history, mm -hmm. uh, because it is sort of a family history type of story to begin with. And uh, as much as I love my husband's heritage, it's Swise is an extremely hard name to pronounce and to say, and so part of the part of the reasoning with the pen name is that it's very easy to remember. Um, I decided on the initials J A because you don't know if that's male or female, and mm -hmm. I think this book has appeal to both male readers and female readers. You so, know, one of the things I, I was noticing about it is that. Um, and impressed me is I would think as a woman writer it would be difficult to penetrate the mind of a 17 year old <laughs> young man I mean because 
boys that age are thinking all kinds of things that are just really very yeah. very foreign to you know <laughs> I, I for hope me. so <laughs> <laughs> yes yes and that was that was one of the fascinating aspects about writing the story was was to be able to think and speak from the mind and um, mm -hmm. the mind of a you know 17 year old teenage boy and yes. And it really, it really was intriguing to me to, to learn yeah. about that. But you grew up with brothers. I grew up with three big brothers. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I did have a bit of an advantage because help. of that. 